It's Big Vic TV. Welcome to my world. Welcome to my world. Welcome to my world. Go to give channel shout out. What's up, my man, Big Ben? What's <laughs> up, baby? We in the building. Oh, we in here. Man, CLT man, now. This man out here eating right now. Gotta get it, baby. I see what it is. Gotta get it, man. Come on, baby. All right, baby. I'm just looking for it. For sure. Baby. You know it. What is up, guys? It's the homie Big Vic, and we are back in the building with another video. Shout out to my Jamaican friends. Shout out to my homies that I grew up with back in Connecticut. I hung around a lot of Jamaicans when I was younger, and I used to love talking like how they talk i love the accent so much when i first moved down south i was talking like i was jamaican and the girls used to always say oh could you say that again they'd be like you jamaican like nah i'm not jamaican but i love them though we back in the building with another video and yo we celebrating our one year in the business one year with my authority just want to kind of give you guys my thoughts on everything that i've experienced and just some things that you may experience and just some things to think about before you enter into this space of box trucking or trucking period whichever whichever lane you may jump in i just want to kind of give you you know just 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 some real after about a year of my experiences in the business enjoy real quick all right first thing i would say is was there a level of difficulty that I experienced when I first got started? So I would say probably my biggest level of difficulty when I first started, of course, I signed up for Amazon Relay. That was the first freight that I started moving initially. Uh, like my first 90 days, it was pretty much all Amazon Relay freight. Level, level of difficulty there, it wasn't really hard work. It's like, like Amazon is not hard work. It's just that you're doing more work than you normally would do if you were OTR or if you had something more uh, direct with other shippers because nine times out of 10, you're not unloading these trucks, you know, but with Amazon, when you're dealing with this postal stuff, you're gonna be unloading these trucks and unloading these trucks. So level level of difficulty there to the average person probably, probably isn't going to be hard, especially if you've been in business before and you've done business the level of difficulty may not be that difficult. You know what I'm saying? So the hardest part for me was the height of my truck wasn't tall enough. So I had like a 12 feet, one inch high box. Yes, I was able to get freight on there, but sometimes Amazon would pack the pallets up so high with, you know, with the freight that I would have to take one or two boxes off of the top of the pallet. And then you know, because it wouldn't fit through the door. And then once I got it inside of my truck, I would take the extra boxes and sit them back in because the door clearance was very short. You know, from the floor to the door was very short on my first truck. So I still was able to get the freight on there, but that actually slowed me down and made me work a little harder than I normally would have had to work if I had a taller box on that truck. So. I would say that was that would probably be the only level of difficulty that I really experienced like for myself, you know, and you know, unloading a truck a couple of times, you know, once you're driving, sometimes those pallets are moving back there. Even though you're you're strapping down the front part to keep them from sliding, once you get to some of these facilities and you're out there turning corners and you know, if if a pallet has been wrapped sloppily by some of the Amazon workers and you pull up to some of those postal routes some of those postal facilities you pull your gate up <laughs> you pull your door up and you're looking at the pallets like oh my goodness i'm talking about pallets is linked over to the side like this some of them linked like this they're just leaning and about to tip over some of them basically are you know may fall over you know so in an instant like that that becomes extra work that you have to do and extra work that you basically are not getting paid for you know some of that more manual labor that i had that i experienced in the beginning you know so when i kind of uh shifted and started doing some more o otr work i 
really took a liking to that particular type of work because a lot of times I didn't have, I wasn't touching this freight. All I was doing was driving and getting the freight responsibly to the end destination. Level of difficulty, you know, you may have some highs and lows in that department. For myself, you know, I had highs and lows. You know, even with some OTR freight, most of it was non-touch, but the freight that I did touch, guess what? I got paid more money when I conversed back with the broker and let them know like, hey, I'm using my pallet jack, I'm using my lift gate, and I'm also helping unload this truck. You know, so you get paid more money in most instances when that occurs. That level of difficulty wasn't difficult for me. I didn't mind that, you know what I'm saying? So it was cool in that department. Now. Let's talk about the learning curves. Learning curves for myself was really learning about this logistic industry, you know, period. Like after a year, you know, I'm a pretty fast learner, so it doesn't take me a long time to pick up on things. And, you know, I've always been in sales, so I know how to talk to people. You know, I sold cars years ago and I sold a lot of things. A majority of my life, you know, has been uh, selling. So level of difficulty when it came to conversing back and forth with brokers uh understanding this freight business booking loads i didn't have a problem in that department i picked up on that pretty quickly you know so that may be different for some other people but not for myself so i didn't have really much of too much of a learning curve there but it was it really became uh cemented in my brain you know when i really understand what my cost per mile is what type of loads I should be looking for while I'm out here over the road and booking this, you know, booking various freight uh, that goes for Amazon as well. You know, not understanding if I take a load one direction and if it's not paying enough, paying enough to bring me back, that's more than likely a load I shouldn't be booking. There was a learning curve when I first got started. So like I said, I, I picked up pretty quickly. It's only but so many times that you're going to take a loss out here when you are booking this freight you know you start picking up pretty quick like okay i know not to book that type of load no more because now i'm coming back empty and i didn't book the load right the first time you know what i'm saying so i'm getting paid half of what i originally i originally thought this load was booking for because i don't have anything coming back so there was a learning curve in that in that department i picked up on it quickly and kept it pushing you know that wasn't something that was going to take me out of the game and make me quit and make me shift and go do some other type of trucking uh portion of the business so i learned that immediately regrouped and started booking my freight appropriately now let's talk about income potential income potential for myself has been great this year like it's been it's been amazing like i said this business has the potential to earn you a six-figure income don't let nobody else tell you nothing different if you're doing what you're supposed to be doing in this business, you can earn that type of money, period, point blank, period. If you're doing what you're supposed to do, booking freight appropriately, understand your cost per mile and really getting in the areas and in the lane in the lanes that pay the right rate per mile for this freight, you can do great. You know, you don't want to be out here at a dollar thirty booking freight unless your cost per mile on your truck is 50 cent a mile. And I highly doubt that the cost, your cost per mile is 50 cent a mile, you know, so uh, pay close attention to that. You know what I'm saying? Pay close attention to the information that you get out here. You know, it's a lot of information being thrown around out here. So pay close attention, follow who you want to follow, do your, do your thing, but always compare apples to apples, oranges to oranges. You feel me? All right. So there's plenty of income potential in this business. I would not be doing it if it wasn't income potential in this business. I definitely wouldn't have been in it for a year if it wasn't income potential. I definitely wouldn't have purchased a second truck if it wasn't income potential in this business. So the money's there, inflation, prices have went up on these vehicles, all types of crazy stuff has been going on and especially in the box truck space, you know, so just be smart, be very smart out here when you're, when you're picking and and choosing and deciding which route you want to go in this logistics industry okay so now growth potential there's so much growth potential in this business you know i always talk about it in, in my other videos you hear me talk about you know the potential of building up your trucking business and being able to take that income and diversify that money and invest investing in other um, opportunities out here 
you know, because you'll be you more than likely if you're doing what you're supposed to be doing, you'll be making the income to move in other directions, you know, and invest your money in some other areas, you know. So it's 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 a lot of growth potential. Not only that, but it's, it's growth potential mentally. You know, you can't. A lot of people are coming from you know jobs and being an employee and an employee, you know, and you're shifting into starting a business. When you're talking about starting your LLC and getting your own authority, so definitely uh, be be cognizant of the shift that you're making when you come into the logistics industry. You know what I'm saying? Like really understand that you know this is a business. At the end of the day, when you're obtaining your own authority, you're working for yourself. You know, so now you're talking about taxes and things of that nature that you have to be, you know, wary of. You know, even if you're investing money in certain uh, areas in the business, if you're investing in education, that's a tax write off. If you're invest investing in equipment, that's a tax write off. If you add a lift gate onto your truck, that's a tax write off. These are expenses that you're spending on your business. You know, even if you're going out buying a company vehicle, it's over six thousand pounds. That's a full tax write off. You can write that entire purchase off. You feel what I'm saying? Or you can spread it out over some years you feel me like that's 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 a gem that's a gem that's a gem you probably heard it out there before but that's a gem growth potential even when you're riding out there a lot of times when i'm riding i have personal development things on that i'm listening to you feel me keeping my brain tight keeping my mind sharp you know so i'm riding and listening to audiobooks i turn my vehicle my truck into a, a rolling university even my cars those are rolling universities you feel me? So I am the growth potential is there. You should be growing. You got a lot of time on that road. If you're over, if you're doing OTR, you know, I'm not bumping music. 95% of the time, I'm not playing music. I'm listening to some audio books. I'm listening to books. I'm feeding my mind, feeding my brain, growing. You feel me? There's plenty of growth potential here. Plenty of it while you're making money. All right. So uh, maintenance. That's something else I experienced. Maintenance. You guys see me. You know, have to drop 22 grand on a truck to fix it, to do a rebuild, you know, through the dealership. The maintenance comes up. I had to do maintenance on my newer truck to 2017. I had to, uh, you know, get the whole def system uh, fixed. That was $1,500. So there's going to be expenses that pop up. You know, I don't per se like the maintenance part of the business, but I understand it comes with the territory. You know, so when you have to get things fixed, you got to do preventive maintenance checks, got to do oil changes, just things to keep your vehicle moving forward. It's called preventive maintenance for a reason, because if you're going to be taking that truck over the road, you want that truck to be in the best possible condition. It could be in to avoid having breakdowns while you are out here over the road. So maintenance, I've experienced it. I jumped over those hurdles and kept on getting, kept on getting to my money. That's part of the business. No way to avoid that. That's why it's important. You hear me say it all the time. Put money aside for maintenance. Put that money up aside for maintenance. Put that money up aside for maintenance. Okay? I've experienced faster business growth. Probably than most other people based on my work ethic. A lot of this is going to be based on your work ethic. You can't come in here crying, complaining. Feel me? You really have to go in and get it done. Like you got to put the work in. You have to put the work in. I've experienced fast business growth because I don't mind jumping in a truck going over the road. I don't mind seeing a load that may pop up last minute and jumping up and going to get that money. You don't hear me saying, oh man, I'm not going all the way over there. No, I'm going to get that money. <laughs> you see me like I was in Atlanta. I'm 30, 40 minutes out. A load popped up that made sense. I can get it. Put it on my truck. I'm going to get that money. I'm turning that truck around. You know why? Because I'm hungry. I'm hungry. Guess what I don't like? Poverty. Guess what I don't like? Being broke. Guess what I don't like? People telling me what to do. Guess what I don't like? People controlling me. <laughs> you feel me? I didn't get in this business to be controlled. I got in this business for freedom. To be free. Everybody's going to grow based on their work ethic. I had somebody uh, reach out to me and they asked me about, um, you know, partnering with somebody to get started in the business. Uh, sometimes partners don't work out. You know what I'm saying? It's going to be pretty hard to split a box truck if you decide, both of y'all decide to go separate ways. 
you know it's, 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 it's good to try to team up and do it and make some money together that's all fine and dandy but when after expenses and you guys look at how much we actually have to split between each other uh, it might make sense for us to you know do our own thing here it's all gonna it's all gonna be based on your work ethic in that department so i've seen a lot of growth in my business was able to expand in a lot of different uh different directions a lot of different avenues building up the business building up my platform growth you know people like who they like we can't help that people attracted to who they're attracted to we have no control over that you know i say fans are fickle you can be do something right one day doing something awesome the next day doing something they don't like hey they gone unsubscribe go over here <laughs> go over there it don't, it don't matter the people that's a, the people that are for you are gonna be for you you feel me so there's a lot of growth potential out here you know but pay attention when you're out there like i said you know i had i had that learning curve in the beginning you know trying to use google maps you know trying to download apps to my phone trucking apps that still wasn't getting doing the job for me so i had to go invest that 300 dollars in a you know a real trucker's navigation so that i wouldn't get so that i wouldn't peel the top of the, the top of my my box off like a sardine can so that i'm cognizant of the low bridges and things of that nature you know what i'm saying guys can't just be jumping in trucks and just you know rolling and not paying attention y'all gonna tear some trucks up out there i'm telling you now you better get your a navigation for a trucker's navigation and download it to your phone or you're gonna have a lot of problems you're gonna have some quick maintenance issues maintenance issues out there pertaining to the top of that box you gotta pay attention to those signs or get that trucker's navigation that way you'll stay on these truck routes you know what i'm saying so that's part of growth that's part of the learning curve of being out here going over the road you can't expect to do twenty thousand dollars a month and you're local you're not going that far or you just plan on just doing amazon only Ugh, i don't really see that happening unless you're in an area with four amazons and you're running four or five loads with amazon a day which i highly doubt that's going to happen but you know think think about that just think about that think about that do i feel that having my own authority is worth it you better believe it absolutely having my own authority was very very worth that three hundred dollars that i spent to get my own authority i have never been more happier than knowing i'm running under my company's own mc number and i'm building it and i have a great safety score which opens up the doors for more work you know with some of these uh shippers out here or even brokers that won't let you run your freight unless you have a safety score run their freight unless you have a safety score so it's been it's been it's been, it's been amazing it's been amazing i had some ups and downs you know it's not going to be all uh peaches and cream along the way you're going to run into some bumps this that's what every business though that's what every business don't don't i wouldn't expect it no other way you know like i said failure is a gift failing is a gift because you learn from that and you grow and you move forward you know what not to do the very next time having my own authority has been great it's allowed me to set my own pace create my own income you know so that's 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 what's been the beauty for me in having my own authority a lot of guys you know may may want to lease on to other people's authorities because they don't want to wait and let their authority get some age on it like that's that's fine you know but remember you take on a lot of risk when you have people running under your authority because if they do something out there that's not right and they're not if they're not in compliance somewhere they're overweight somewhere guess whose company that nick or that ding is going on it's going on your company it's going on your company so but having my own authority has been great it's been great i would have it no other way I've been able to build a lot of relationships within this year, you know, of being in this space right here. And uh, pretty much all of it has been positive. I've created some positive relationships with a lot of people in this space, even people that are thinking about getting into the space, you know, uh, course members, people, people that I've done consultations with 
and you know help them along in their journey it's just been it's been it's been pretty amazing you know to just be able to build this platform um like i have although i've had a smaller following before i started in this box truck space um being able to add on to it and touch a whole nother audience of people has just been incredible you know I, i'm i'm having i'm enjoying the process i'm enjoying the journey and i only look to give people great information out here that's it you know that's all that's it so guys listen if you're brand new you're looking at this business right now just do your due diligence so that you can make an informed decision on which avenue is going to work best for you in this business that's all you have to do make an informed de decision just don't overanalyze the business don't overanalyze it don't be so over analytical that you don't make a move. You know, you just have to decide which lane is for you. A non-CDL box truck, CDL box truck. You want to go, you know, uh, 18 wheelers. You feel you feel me like there's just so many different lanes that you can you can go in in this in this space. You want to dispatch however you want to do it. There's a lane for you. All right. So I hope this just sheds a little more light on this business for you guys and just my experience what i've went through since i've been uh running this first year in the business looking forward to more looking forward to helping more people you feel me so make sure you tap in you need assistance let's set up a strategy call you already know what it is it's the homie big big tv you already know what i got going on just tap in with me all right looking forward to seeing you talking to you real soon and you guys y'all make sure y'all have an incredible incredible weekend an incredible next week and i'm hoping you all have an incredible year this year 2022 let's get it let's eat always hustle never stop growing to the next video deuce go, to let you go but maybe it's too late to figure it out